this is an historical landscape where the tourists stay in caves. Welcome to Cappadocia! Welcome to Cappadocia. This strange Martian landscape is one of the most visited areas in Turkey. It's steeped in history. Many of the caves here were dug out by the first Christians over 2,000 years ago. This historical region, going back thousands of years, was originally a Persian province. But now just a small portion of the original province is regarded as Cappadocia, and you won't find it on many maps. There are a few towns that make up this touristic region, namely Gureme, Urgup, Ortesar, Avonos and Uchisar. We'll be having a look at all these places later on in the programme. But Gureme, that's the resort behind me, is probably the most well-known with more restaurants and better nightlife. Gureme is a real tourist centre. It's got a few souvenir shops and a few bars with live entertainment, most of them serving popular wines of the region. Get me a beer! It's been a popular tourist and backpackers destination for decades and many people come back here year after year. Gureme has lots of restaurants serving popular dishes like testy kebab, which comes in a clay pot. And there are two Chinese, two Indian and a Korean restaurant as well. We've got fish for dinner. What is it, sea bass? Yes, leverick. Oh. and we tried out quite a few of the restaurants while we were there. And there's more carpet shops here than you'd see in most other resorts in Turkey. Just outside Gurame is one of the most visited museums in Turkey. So this is the open air museum, which is not far from Gurame. In fact, you can walk it from Gurame and these caves at the back of me and all around this area were all dug out by the Christians which were of course being persecuted 2,000 years ago and some of them are churches as well and some of the paintings in the churches still survive. And some of these caves have got very low roofs. So this would have been a long table and people would have sat and had their dinner like this. All in a line. And do bear in mind, it gets a bit busy certain times of the day. What, what are you doing sitting here? I'm all caved out, so I'm having coffee. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> These caves make for fantastic film sets and there's so many famous films have been filmed here. Including Ghost Rider, The Spirit of Vengeance, Winter Sleep, The Ottoman Lieutenant and dozens of Turkish films and TV. If you visited here before years ago, you may find that it's a bit more restrictive now. One, you can't take photos and videos in the churches. And some of the more important caves, to me, are not now accessible. 
This museum attracts tourists from all over the world. And this year, 2022, they've beat all the records and almost four million people have visited here. So what about the hotels here? Well, many of the hotels advertise cave rooms. Some of the hotels here are beautiful and stylish with great facilities and a reminiscent of the old Roman architecture, something you rarely see in new buildings anywhere in the world nowadays. And the stonemasons here are amazing. The beautiful stonework. Be aware that some of the hotels advertise cave rooms, but they're not really like a real cave room. They've been beautifully made up and uh, actually luxury, some of them. If you can imagine 30 odd years ago, the original cave rooms looked much like this. They walled them across and put a door on and a little window and a light bulb and that was it. And they didn't even have a toilet. So things have changed quite a lot. But most of the real cave rooms are high up in the resort. So be aware of that. Years ago, this was backpackers paradise, but things have changed. And some hotels charge premium rates to stay in a real cave room. So we're staying at the Sapphire Stone Hotel, which cost us about just over 60 pounds a night. It was one of the cheapest we could find, which included breakfast on the small roof terrace. Prices have gone up. Um, it is of course cheaper to come in the winter, but there's often snow on the ground. You can find slightly cheaper accommodation on the outskirts of the town in the newly built little hotels and pensions like the one we stayed in for one night, the Alla Stone, which was fairly cheap but they're not quite as stylish as the hotels in the centre of Gurame. Most people who visit Cappadocia get up very early in the morning to see one of the most spectacular sights in Turkey. So it's about 20 past five in the morning and there's a lot of activity here. unbelievable is hot air can lift 28 people in a basket and that's about seven metric ton about the weight of three small cars as the Sun rises the magic of 150 balloons in the air doesn't go away around 3,000 people fly here every morning if the weather is okay and the wind speed is low and this spellbinding morning event attracts jeep safaris, horse riders, photographers, and it's a great place for a photo shoot. If you can get your horse to behave, Time for breakfast. We decided after breakfast that we should do the balloon flight ourselves. 
So we've just come and paid for our balloon flight, which is in a couple of days' time. Now, the prices vary depending on what company you go with and what size basket you go in. Some of the baskets take 28 people. We're going on one that's uh, 16 people. And the prices vary with the companies and the size of the basket. So between sort of £180 per person up to 250 and above, depending on the basket and the agency. And you need to book it in advance because at this time of the year, which is the end of September, beginning of October, the baskets are all full. We've really struggled to find a space. It's dark because it's 5.30 in the morning and we've got a balloon to catch. And apparently our pilot for the day is Abdullah. Just amazing. This is Abdullah. Okay. He's our pilot. <laughs> it's not scary, I think. Nowadays, these flights are all controlled by the Turkish Civil Aviation Authorities and they've got a really good safety record. İyi gidiyor mu? Güzel, çok güzel. Evet. Yeah. Presume they're going to catch us. <laughs> so that's the end of our lovely flight, and he actually managed to get it on the trailer. On the trailer. <laughs> But it didn't end there. We were given a souvenir and a glass of bubbly. Sherefa. Sherefa. Other popular pastimes include quad bike tours, horse riding, and hiking in the many unusual valleys. And you can also hire quad bikes, scooters and bicycles if you want to venture out on your own. One really popular walk is the Gewerjenlik Vardisi, or what we would call the Pigeon Valley, which is at the back of Gurime. 
where you can investigate some really interesting rock formations and caves. And this walk will also take you to Uchisa, which we'll be looking at later. These unusual rock formations are the cores of volcanoes and once they solidified millions of years ago and then the soil around them washed away and left these beautiful cores and then a couple of thousand years ago the Christians decided oh this is quite easy to dig out a cave so they created caves cities and even churches in them the Christians didn't just dig caves in the fairy chimneys around Cappadocia they also dug under the ground and this is one of their underground cities this is Derinkui so we're just going to have a little look around underground and see how they lived nearly 2,000 years ago these steps are very worn obviously lots of people have come this way most of the people that lived under the ground in these catacombs were being persecuted because of their religion. Oh, oh you've got to watch your feet. What about your head? And your head. <laughs> and this is obviously where their fresh water came from. But there's no water running now. Walking through these catacombs, you realise it must have been a claustrophobic living environment and difficult to imagine hundreds of people down here somehow cooking food. And it must have been difficult to remove all the sewage. Your head. Wow, this is deep. We must be 50 meters under the ground now, maybe more. I just felt whatever you go down, you go up. Well, we don't know that yet, do we? God, I wouldn't like to be in here if there's a power cut. <laughs> Might be a good idea to bring a torch. Oh, this is a really long one. What is getting lower? Crikey, oh God, I banged my head on the ceiling there. Wow, look at this. So further underground is this big, what used to be a church. And right near the bottom is this air vent, which is a great big tube going right to the surface. If you get here after 11 o'clock, this is how it looks. So as you can see, this place gets full of tours about midday and um, the oxygen gets a bit less in here. And it is, when you're coming back up, you do struggle a little bit to breathe and you find the temperature rises, the higher you get up, the warmer it starts getting. So it's a good time to come really early or really late. And after you've been in the underground city, there's plenty of little coffee shops. And treat yourself to a Turkish goose liver. Cappadocian wines are sold all over Turkey and lots of them are made in Urgup and also in Avanos, but Avanos is also renowned for something else. Avanos has been well known for its pottery probably since the Hittite period and mainly because of the beautiful clay quality that comes out of the river, what they call the Kuzulurmak, which means Red River. This lovely little town has become quite a residential area but the old part of the town has become another tourist jewel and they produce some beautiful pottery pieces. One popular tourist destination is a little factory outlet producing really high quality pottery. Charles and Camilla came here 10 years ago. So if it's good enough for King Charles, it's good enough for us. <laughs> Beautiful glaze, aren't they? 
These actually feel really nice. Does that mean you're going to buy one? I don't know because I wouldn't want to chip them. It'd be nice with my whiskey in. <laughs> and they do copies of all sorts of items from museums. Even pieces from Gobekli Tepe. And there's a few knowledgeable assistants here that show you around the factory. After then we fired it again between 900 degrees to 1000 degrees. You can touch. And this is replica. A kind of uh, tea ceremony in October. You'll also see the pottery artists. You know, then you can check them out. Well, that's such detailed work. And it makes you realise the work that goes into these lovely pieces. And if you feel up to it, you can have a go at throwing your own pots. Does his kit bit. Wow, look at that. <laughs> So that's the lid. And that's taken just a few minutes. Seconds. <laughs> that's taken a few seconds. That's it, lovey, that's all you've got to do. <laughs> it feels like the generation game. <laughs> there you go. You think Camilla had to put these on? <laughs> yes, that's the point. Actually, I took it in. Okay. All right, you ready? <laughs> Trudy's got a bit of trouble with her feet because she can't and reach the wheel. This is what I made earlier. You've got to squash that up to get the clay. Yeah. Go on then, do it. Go on. Oh, what a shame. Oh, still, you'll make one just as good, lovey. Bit more of a spin. A bit more of a spin. Well, you can't do it, can you? Your legs are not long enough. Oh. Okay. Mm. I need to walk. Wow, look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Wow, that's pretty good, lovely. My vocation in life. <laughs> <laughs> but you must wear those next time you have a go. Thank you. In the back streets of the old town, there are still families continuing their pottery tradition, and many are still located in caves. One well known potter who was popular when the first tourists started coming here over 35 years ago was a guy called Ches Gallip and I remember meeting him. What made his pottery cave so popular was the lockets of hair that people donated who had visited his cave. And I was surprised to find his workshop cave had become a museum. And it's now called Gallip's Satch Musicy or Gallip's Hair Museum. And his family still make and sell the pots there. You could really call this an Aladdin's cave, couldn't you? Yeah. Eh? Isn't that lovely? Yeah, don't get looking too much at it. <laughs> so you didn't find my hair then? No, no, <laughs> no chance. Found something we can afford. <laughs> Three for 10 lira. <laughs> Other than its pottery, Avanos is a lovely town, which retains a lot of its Turkish culture and heritage. And there seems to be something interesting around every corner. There are a few restaurants and fast food places, including a very unusual McDonald's,
Even getting to the park over the suspension bridge is a bit of a novelty. And we did find one of our favourite shops here, Elverger Alleys. Warm. It's lovely. With nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a few hotels and guest houses if you want to stay here too. So let's go a few miles away now to the little town of Urgup. Urgup seems a more relaxed place than some of the other areas around here like Gurume and it's more of a, an established town. A lot of the hotels that are here are converted old houses from over a hundred years ago and they're beautiful Ottoman style. Urgup's got its own share of flint stone caves just like Gurume. including what they call the Three Sisters Fairy Chimneys, which are a bit out of the town. But it's the stylish restaurants and boutique hotels here that Urgup is renowned for, and most of them are a little way out of the centre. The Turasan Winery is also very popular with tourists here. Unfortunately, we didn't get time to visit this, so that's one for next time. The further you walk up the back streets of these little towns, the more interesting things you find. Other notable places to visit are Orteisar, Uchisar and, if you're interested in old caves and churches, Chavashin might be worth a visit. Apparently Chavashin has two old churches, both called St John, and the larger one is dated 6th century. But obviously you need a lot of time to investigate these historical sites, if of course you're particularly interested too. But this village is mostly visited by day trippers. Ortehisar, I think, has the highest castle in Cappadocia at 90 metres high, that's 300 feet. And it's probably the most difficult and scariest to climb. <gasps> Climbing up to the top of the castle here in Orta Hisar is not one for the faint-hearted. If your ability is a bit limited, or you're getting old like me, you might find it a bit of a struggle. But it is a fantastic view. Not far outside is Halach Monastery and there's a couple of 9th century churches nearby too. But we only visited the castle. Around the base of the castle there was quite a lot of interesting things that we found. including a nice little cafe. 
So things are a little bit cheaper here as well, like tuna salads for 50 lira each, and an FS beer is only 40 lira. And an Iran is even cheaper. <laughs> Don't you know the price? No. <laughs> <laughs> On our way back to the car, we heard this loud noise, so we decided to investigate. He said he's from a local village and he's been doing this for 32 years. If it hadn't been for the noise of the lathe, we probably would have missed his shop. And this is what he was making. So this is the castle at Uchhisar, which is actually fantastic and it's got a fabulous view of the whole area. Most of the buildings here surround the 60 meter high castle and many of them have been restored and opened up as hotels by the returning Turks from Europe, especially those from France. One of which, Aisha Nur, the owner of La Mation de Shishik, told us a lot about the area. You can see some little souvenirs. Uchisar see has some pretty streets, restaurants and hotels. And it's one of those places where you really need to stay here to appreciate how lovely it is. And there are still a few buildings here that need considerable restoration work. So what about getting here? Well, there's a high speed train from Istanbul to Konya and then you can get the bus, which is about three and a half hours. Or you could fly to Kayseri, which is just over an hour away. And Gurume Autogar, which is the bus station, is really close to the resort, so you can walk in. And if not, just get a taxi to your hotel. Or you could just come in a car. We hired a car from Fetier, and it took us 10 hours to drive it, but we had a stop in Airdeer on the way, and also in Konya, so make a holiday of it. Of course, getting around in the resorts is easy too. There's mini buses to all the little towns around here. And of course, you can always go to an agent and book a tour, which if you're, if you're a bit short for time, is probably the quickest way to see everything. So that's it from the fantastic Cappadocia. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss where we go next. Thanks, Thanks for watching. watching. If you've enjoyed this film, you might like our film about Eskishahir. Click the picture to watch.